Wow, buenos días, buenas tardes. Es un placer estar aquí con ustedes hoy. Uh, good afternoon, it's morning and back in Albuquerque, but it is a privilege and an honor for me to be speaking here today. I just feel very welcome and uh, uh, just honored uh, that you all would show up to come and listen to little old me about a program that my former mayor started. Uh, I'm Alan Armijo, Director of Constituent Services, and people ask me, what is, what is Director of Constituent Services? Uh, I tell people if it's in the headlines, my department hears about it, and that's what we do. But um, I was hired by the former uh, mayor and worked for him for four years in this position, and the new mayor that just came in in December uh, asked me to stay on to, as Director of Constituent Services. So I do more than complaints. I get all the special projects. And the Better Way program was one of the special projects that the former mayor, Richard Berry, assigned to me to oversee, to overlook, to work with the providers, to answer the hundreds and hundreds of calls um, that people uh, made to Albuquerque, to the mayor's office, to find out about this program. And I host people when they come to visit the program uh, to see what it's about, get them on the van, pick them up at lunch. I'm sort of a historian, so I give them a tour and give them the history of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, and so for me, it's a pleasure because what our philosophy and my philosophy is how do we help people who need help? And that's what this program is about. Now, you're a little bit of trouble here because I am a former politician. I was a city councilor in Albuquerque for 12 years and a county commissioner for eight. I'm a former high school teacher, so lecture time. You give me a microphone and a podium, you're in trouble. But uh, the program is not here about me. It is about what this program is about. We're going to show a short video uh, to sort of give you a, a comprehension and understanding of this program. I'll talk a little bit, but I always find that it's best to let you ask the questions and we answer a lot of things like that. I've anticipated a lot of questions. I get a lot of calls, and I visit a lot of... I have a lot of visitors, and I've been to Camden, New Jersey, been to Tulsa, Oklahoma twice. They just started the program. In fact, just a couple of days ago, I was going through the process with them. And uh, if you decide to start this program, I am available in any community that you decide to start it uh, to answer questions, to guide you through it, through email, through phone calls. Uh, I will make time to do that. But let's show the video first, and then we'll go from there. Well, I'm Richard Berry, and I'm the mayor of the great city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Albuquerque, like most cities, has issues that need to be addressed, and we need to look for better ways to do that. Panhandling is one of those issues. Many cities, including Albuquerque in the past, have been punitive. They give tickets out, and that just hasn't worked. So we've decided to take upon ourselves a, a new and unique initiative called There's a Better Way. What's going on, man? You want to work? Huh? Meet me on this side. Okay. My name is William Cole. Uh, I do security and I'm the van driver for Better Way program for St. Martin's. Making our first stop here to pick up uh, some of our hopeful employees. How are you guys doing today? This was actually the mayor's idea and he reached out to us with this idea of what would happen if we sent a van around to people who are panhandling and gave them an opportunity to work for a day, be paid for a day, and get support services. How are you doing this morning? My name is Will, and we do the Better Way program. What we do is we offer $9 an hour for a day's work, and we pay you cash at the end of the day. Would you be interested? Well, I thought it was the city coming to tell me I needed to get off the highway first. <laughs> I had a three bedroom house, I had my kids, I had everything in the world going for me and um, I had anxiety and I just started pulling my hair out and I knew I was going to lose everything and I did. All right, let's get it going. How are you today? Everything's good? How are you, ma'am? Often when we talk about employment, we use one model. It's called full-time employment, 40 hour a week, it fits everybody and it doesn't. If you're dealing with mental health issues, often working one or three days a week is all you can do. All right, we need a couple of shovels, a couple of heavy rakes. We give them an opportunity to work five and a half hours a day for $9 an hour cash. We get rid of at least one to two tons of weeds and litter at each spot, and we offer them services afterwards. I'm not the type of person that really likes to ask people for money. I'd rather earn it. 
All I need is that one shot and I'm not gonna miss it up. <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> I go around cleaning up anyways, just for free, because it's like the world's a dirty place, and so I like cleaning up. I miss cleaning my house, so I don't have a house to clean anymore. This particular program has lots of small, instantaneous goals of getting people off a street corner. And I know that the mayor would echo this. Nobody survives well panhandling on a street corner. In a lot of the neighborhoods, we get people that come out and they really appreciate the beautification work that we're doing in their neighborhoods. Overall, I think this is a better way for people to get money into their pockets other than panhandling. Something happens when you get cash in your pocket. You feel a little taller, you feel a little bigger, you feel a little bit more in control of your life. It's kind of a small miracle. What we're saying to folks is there's a better way. There's a better way than standing on a street corner asking for money. There's a better way than handing five dollars out your window. The better way is to give people the dignity of work, let them beautify their city, and get them connected to services so they can get back on their feet. It's just simple enough, it's working. So I'll give you, I like showing this video first because I think it sets the tone for what uh, Mayor Barry uh, was about. It was a nice article written about him, a, a Republican mayor doing something in social services, which for whatever reason, the media decided that Republicans, I guess, can't do that. But, uh, but the idea is, is that um, his theme was, I'm the mayor of Albuquerque. And whether you live in a tent or you live in a mansion, I am your mayor. And if the people in my city need help, we're gonna figure out how to help you. And we're gonna do that. And his whole theme was, give, as, you, as he mentioned here, give people the dignity to work. Connect them to services, and that's what happens. So what we did is, is he had gone through a couple of processes in terms of, we were getting a lot of calls, and I was filling those, my staff were, in terms of people complaining about panhandlers on medians and in the corners and what to do about them. Um, people complaining, uh, almost rear-ended this person because they were giving money out to somebody on the corner and you need to make a law against it and give them tickets. And, and so initially uh, we put out what you saw was the 311 sign that said, if you need help, call 311. If you want to donate, instead of giving uh, money out of your window, donate to United Way, uh, call 311. They will connect you to United Way. The $5 you gave, uh, give out the window may or may not uh, be used for food. Uh, it's one individual, but it, through United Way and the program that they have set up, if you give $5, we can actually feed 20 people. We got about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 donated that way. So again, we were still having complaints. Mayor Sale wasn't happy. Um, one day, he was at a light street uh, uh, traffic stop, rolled down his window, asked the man there, he said, hey, my man, if I gave you a job for the day and paid you cash at the end of the day, would you work? And the guy says, absolutely. I hate doing this. Give me a job. So he came back, got us directors together. He says, I have this idea. We sat around the table, talked, all the negatives, what could be positive, what could work, what could not work listen to all of us guys let's make it simple let's find some money and i'll call saint martin and see if they want to do this and if they do we'll let them do it we'll give them a van and we'll just do it and that's all there is to it. and that's how it started and we went from there so i get asked a lot of questions and i'm sure some of you will be uh, asking those same questions when the van driver will here stops what does he ask them does he ask them if they're out of jail? Does he ask them if they're sex offenders? Does he ask them if they're legal or illegal? Does he ask them uh, if they've been in trouble? He asks one question. Do you want to work today? Simple. If you do, get in the van. And then we're going to take you to the work site. So what happens is that we started out as a, a, a grant from the city for $50,000 two days a week. Uh, to this program and, uh, and, and did it from there to see how it would work. The providers, the homeless people as we talked to them, 
the panhandlers um, felt like it was successful and we were getting people who wanted to work more often. Now, you cannot show up to a spot, to St. Martin's, for example, and say, I want to work and get on the van. The, uh, the ones, the van uh, would just go out to different parts of the city, so we gave them a van, we, we wrapped it around with our 311 services. We have within our solid waste department a, a division called Clean Cities. They're responsible for cleaning up the city. We don't have enough people in that department. As you can see, our tumbleweeds get pretty high. Those are our trees. And actually, people decorate them for Christmas on the freeway but when they dry up. <laughs> but, um, uh, and, and then as anywhere else, there's trash, and people throw out their trash, and so they're cleaning. So they're cleaning up medians, right-of-way areas, under the freeway, trails. Uh, we don't take them near schools or to schools uh, when they go out. Uh, so the driver comes in about 6.30 in the morning, loads up the breakfast and lunch and water for them, and, uh, and, and then takes them out and gives them some breakfast and while, while they're on their way, and then they have a lunch break. And then they call Clean Cities, uh, and they bring a dump truck so they can load all the trash and go back to the facility and get paid in cash, $45. And the driver is there to verify who, who was on the van and who were. So we expanded that. The mayor thought and the city council thought and the provider thought that this was working. Let's look at expanding it. The mayor submitted his budget to the city council asking to double uh, the project from fifty dollars to $100,000. The city council liked it so much they actually gave him $181,000. And we expanded the program to four days a week. And then last year, before the mayor left, in his budget, he asked uh, if they would refund it. And, and actually, uh, city council ended up appropriating $361,000 uh, to expand the van program to five days a week and a second van five days a week. Now, the second van, we have a landfill outside of Albuquerque. And we have a lot of win in Albuquerque, not just from us politicians, but, you know, just coming through there. Um, <laughs> But uh, so there's a lot of trash blowing around the fence there and all that. So that second van goes to a particular spot and people, uh, different days go to different spots. And people who have not worked before are given first opportunity to get on the van to work. And then if they don't have enough, let's say they get eight, the van can hold up to 12. If you worked before, now you can get on the van and work again. So they go out to the landfill and do the same thing five hours a day, pick up the, the papers. And not hard work. So usually, I mean, I think this is the hardest I've seen them do any work, picking up that tree trunk, on, but it's mainly weeds and trash and raking them up and doing those kind of things. So we've expanded that program, and, and, and that discussion we've had in the mayor's office is making it bigger, does it make it better? And I think we're still having those discussions. Could we expand this beyond this? We're not sure. And with our new mayor just got elected, um, we're, we're going through those discussions as well. But as far as we're concerned, as far as the city council is concerned, the providers, you go out and talk to the panhandlers and homeless people, they feel that this is a great opportunity for them uh, to do something, to earn a paycheck, uh, to get some money to go stay for a night. Now, St. Martin's, um, I keep calling them St. Martin's. They've changed their name to Hope Works because people always thought they were religiously affiliated. And actually, St. Martin's started 36 years ago by a group of little old ladies who say, we want to help people. And um, it had nothing to do with any church or any uh, uh, denomination. Uh, St. Martin's is the patron saint of helping people, and that's what they wanted, and so that's why they named it that. So the new director changed it to Hope Works. But the idea is, how do we help people who need help? And it's very simple. As Mayor Barry said, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't make it bigger than it is. And I get a lot of questions. And I'm sure some of you will have those same kind of questions, and I'm ready for them. But my message is, is if you want to help the most vulnerable in your community, this is one way to do that. And you all are probably already doing many other things, trying to figure out how you do housing, feeding areas, uh, those kind of things, places to shower. We're struggling with all those as well. And, and I do get questions like, do you think you're getting more homeless because of this program? And if somebody's moving to Albuquerque to work for one day for $45, I think that's really hard to, to, to believe and understand. We've served probably, uh, I've lost the numbers now because they keep changing so much, but I can get those for you, if you and I'll leave you my email address and all that. Probably seven, 8,000 people, uh, about almost 2,000 duplicated. That means new people, so we've been getting some of the same people 
uh, coming back to work. Uh, and why that's happened, originally, because we never advertised where the van was driving, uh, you were getting new people all the time, but as, as we were expanding the program, then uh, the first van does go two days a week to a particular site as well and, and gives first choice to people who have never worked and then gets them out to work doing those kind of things. I think, I think as I've said, um, probably answering the questions is, is probably the best thing. Um, I do have um, forms and people look at forms and how do you get this information. So one of the things that the driver does and will uh, is a unique individual. As you mentioned in the video, he worked security at St. Martin's, so he, got, he knew a lot of the homeless people. He originally was from Chicago and grew up in the streets of Chicago, moved to Albuquerque many, many years ago. Uh, I don't know what he did previous to that, but he worked at St. Martin's as a security person. He's firm, he's not a loud person, uh, but he knows how to work with people. And he, in a way, has become a counselor without any training, formal training, uh, so that he picks those people up and He's just not a supervisor. He, he gets in there and works. He can't stand just standing around. And uh, he, he works. He loads the dump truck up. He helps them cut weeds. Uh, he does those kind of things. And he starts talking to them. Hey, why are you in the street? What's been going on with you? And he starts getting information. And then if they, if they want a self-report, they can fill out uh, some sheets that he has in terms of did they sleep on the streets last night? that they had to prostitute themselves to get money? Uh, do they have some issues with drugs and alcohol? Uh, then he started, hey, we have a program that can maybe help you with some counseling. And initially, when the, the people were taken back to St. Martin's, the caseworkers would try to meet with them and get information and do a survey. Uh, but the workers, a lot of them said, just give me my money. I want to get out of here. I want to go get a room. I want to go get something to eat, whatever the case may be. So caseworkers go out a couple of days a week during lunchtime because they're a captive audience. They're not allowed to leave Will's site. Of course, the other ones at the landfill, there's nothing out there. They cannot go across the street to one of the fast food chains. He has the food there. He goes to a park. They have to stay with him. They have to eat there. They're a captive audience. So then the caseworkers are able to get more information. Now when they go back, after they get their cash, most of them want to find out about the other services. Where can I, uh, I have a dental issue. Healthcare for the homeless is just a block away. I want to see if I can get housing. Come in here, let's fill out this paperwork so we can start that. I want to work some more. We have a work, another work program that we can help you do those guys. So it really is, it's not about getting people to work so much. That's the hook. That's the hook to draw them in to see what other services you can get them. Now, one of the issues we're dealing with in Albuquerque is we don't have a mental health facility long term. For people, the current mayor, Mayor Keller, is now working with our county to provide that funding uh, to, uh, to build a facility. We are, from the city side, going to do a capital project to build a facility, and the county has imposed a tax a uh, year and a half ago. They're getting about $17 million a year dedicated to behavioral health, mental health. So they'll operate the program. We'll build it. They operate it. So it's a a joint effort there, which is unusual between city and county. I know I was on both sides. And uh, so we're, those are our long-term goals. And how do we help people? How do we figure out how we help people? Uh, certainly, um, as been mentioned, Chicago, Seattle, Anchorage, Honolulu, Atlanta, uh, as I mentioned, um, Tulsa. Uh, I've only visited a couple other places. I did try to get Honolulu to invite me to be a speaker out there. <laughs> They didn't do it. Uh, I still have hopes, but um, maybe they will one of these days. But I like Little Rock, too. It's a beautiful city. And, and I, I'm going to stop from talking and, and try to answer questions and, and just do it that way. I think we'll get a lot more out of that if that's possible. Great. Alan, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. We'll raise your hands, and we'll wait for the microphone. City Director, wait for the microphone, please, ma'am. Coming right at you. Thank you. I like the simplicity of the uh, project. My question would be regarding the funds, which you said or came from the city council appropriated those for the project. What issue did you have to uh, sort out when it came to taxes? In terms of, of, the, of the individuals being mm -hmm. paid? 
So, because we did this uh, through our provider. Say that again. Since we, if I, could I, I'd like walking around, I'm sorry. It's hard for me, I've been a teacher so long, it's hard for me to stand in one place. Um, so, it, we, we talked about that, and that was one of the things that we talked about in the round table with the Mayor Barry is taxes. Who's gonna pay taxes, who's gonna do this, who's gonna do that? So we're granting the money to St. Martin's, mm -hmm. and, and an individual under federal law can uh, earn up to $600 a year without having to pay taxes. So what we decided is that uh, we're gonna pay, they're gonna pay them, uh, you're gonna fill out a W-2 form, and St. Martin's keeps it on file, but it's up to that individual to file taxes. We don't withdraw any taxes, we don't do anything, we pay them, it's up to them to pay the taxes at the end of the year. And there were no it, issues with your, your uh, uh, finance department and your accounting principals to pay cash? Initially. That was not an issue? Initially. <laughs> but when you have a mayor that says, that's not going to get in the way. Okay. We're you, not doing the paying. We're granting the money to another entity. entity. Now that entity, St. Martin's, uh, pays and then they submit to our finance department to be reimbursed. All this other stuff has nothing to do with the city. We're giving you this money, you figure out how you're gonna use it, you figure out how you're gonna pay people, and you, and you submit and we'll reimburse you for all your cost, overhead, operational, whatever the case may be, so no. Okay. So it, it, this program is not set up where somebody has some physical disabilities, they're not able to work. And, and we don't have the van handicap accessible. So uh, what the drivers do is if they see someone who's physically handicapped, they give them uh, one of our little brochures here that lets them know about the services that are provided by different providers and also what St. Martin's provides as well and ask them to go there so that do that. So you have to be physically able to, to work and get in the van. I do, I think one of the things I wanted to mention is that the first week that the van went out, none of us thought about this. All of a sudden, in the middle of the work week, I need to use the restroom. Uh-oh. We hadn't thought about that. Huh? Because what? I can walk down the hall here and use the restroom anytime I want. We don't, you know, we're not in that situation. So then they came back to me and I said to the mayor, Mayor, they got to use the restroom. He said, oh my God. He says, what do we do? <laughs> I said, let's call solid waste. They have porta potties. Director, get a trailer with a porta potty on it and drop it off at St. Martin so they can hitch it on to the van. And that's what we did. So little things like that you don't think about until it happens. Little but important, right? Get a porta potty, get it clean. The tools are provided by uh, clean cities, the gloves, um, the rakes, all of that stuff is provided. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Do the jobs you're lining up for the individuals, are they going to be restricted to city? work or have you thought about expanding it to working for some of the nonprofits that don't have the ability for landscaping and outside work? So um, it is restricted to city uh, right away areas and things like that. So I was getting a lot of calls once this pro uh, program hit the, the airwaves. Um, senior citizen, I have a big backyard, I have a lot of weeds, I'm just not able to cut those weeds. Can you send that van over to my house? Nonprofits, businesses, I'd like to hire them for the day. We're not going to do that because of risk issues. 
So St. Martin started their own day labor program. They got a grant for it. They were actually working on a shoestring, I think for $42,000. They were actually doing the work of, if they would, as a budget of $150,000. So uh, at, until that budget ran out, what they were able to do is contract with those individuals, nonprofits, businesses that wanted to hire a person for a day or two days. A landscaping, I need five people for three days. Uh, construction company, I need a few people for two days. Uh, little old lady, I need somebody to clean my yard for a day. And it turned out to be about $10 an hour. St. Martin was not getting any of that money. Uh, they were setting it up. They were being contacted. I would refer all the calls I would get in my office to them. They also were proactive and reaching out and sending out flyers. They were getting a lot of calls and they were setting that up and the person had to get there on their own. They may have given them a, bat, a bus pass and things like that, but yes. yes. So we keep it at, at the public level and away from schools because I do get that question. What about sex offenders? We don't know if they're sex offenders because we only ask one question. Do you want to work? But we make sure that we're not sending them to schools or near schools and places like that and actually try to keep them away from most people. Other question. Right back here. Wait, and yeah, please wait for the microphone. Um, in regards to, I saw the band, it looked like it was mainly in English. Do you have any issues as far as multilingual, and this was in rela relation to a previous question, uh, non-English speaking uh, citizens uh, that uh, may need, and then also I guess the van driver, does he need to be multilingual too as far as to communicate with the uh, workers? It hasn't been an issue that's been reported to me by Will, and I communicate with him. And he knows a little bit of Spanish to say, trabajar, work, you want to work? And people know about the van in Spanish and English, so it has not been an issue. We'll see in the future whether or not it will be. There's a question right here. What, microphone coming. Thank you very much. Uh, in our River Valley area, which is Fort Smith, uh, we have a high percentage of panhandlers that are doing this professionally. And they are pretending to be homeless, but aren't. So when, how do you handle that situation or has that corrected through this program uh, are they intimidated at all by somebody coming by and saying, do you want to work for the day? Or do they see that they're making more money by standing on the, the, the street corner? I think we're seeing all of that. We are, I was talking about that yesterday, we are seeing what I call tag teaming of, of a person working two or three hours and then, or, or panhandling two or three hours and then somebody else come in and they're sharing their money. And there have been territorial disputes as well. Uh, and there have been people who uh, have strong arm other people to help them out do those kind of things. So we are seeing those. I don't, um, I know that the van has stopped and some of those same people that I've seen, uh, to me, t tag team have also gotten in the van. So a lot of people don't want to do it. I'm sure there's that percentage that uh, don't want to and, and maybe they're the ones that are saying no when we do get a no. So all of that that you're saying, yes, we've seen that. We've seen that. I don't know if they're intimidated or not. Uh, some of them do work, and some of them may decline in doing all that. So, Yes, sir, right here. Here's a question. Microphone coming at you. Uh, have you given consideration to offering different kinds of jobs that may not include physical labor? And what would that look like? We did think about that, but then what does that entail? Does that entail office work? And that d changes the dynamics uh, uh, in terms of interaction with other people. Of, of, of cleanliness in terms of uh, people, you know, hadn't had a shower for quite a while. Uh, are we, then we, we, we decided that then we're going to have to start doing background checks and treating it like a, a regular job. So no, it's all about beautification. And the money that comes from Solid Waste Department, which is an enterprise fund, that means they make their own money, $261,000 comes from the solid waste, and it has, to, under ordinance, any kind of monies from solid waste department is geared towards, has to do with what they do under their mission. That is, cleaning up trash, uh, cleaning up the media and right of ways, parks, those kind of things. So, no, we have not thought about that. Mayor Smith. First question is, will the bus driver, is he the only supervisor for that crew that he picks up that day? Yes. Are the police involved in this in any way? No. 
Has that created any problems? No. <clears throat> I've got to come to Albuquer Albuquerque. I, I think your homeless are different than our homeless are. <laughs> Let me, uh, and the reason I was, did that smart out leaky time, uh, type mayor, uh, and I apologize, is it's a very simple program. Do you want to work? Get on the van. Uh, one of the things that I was talking about, Will, earlier is this is a unique individual and our other bus driver as well in terms of they've learned how to handle people on the streets. They've learned without yelling and threatening and doing those kind of things how to deal with people. And Mayor Barry used to say, where there's a will, there's a way. Find your will. Find that person. Doesn't have to have a degree, maybe has a degree from the streets, but has to be a kind of person that's a people person and knows how to work with people and handle people who can be unruly sometimes, doing those kind of... Will, we've never, he's never had to call the police for an incident. Uh, he's never had anything stolen because the people he picks up, you know, everything they own is on their back and it's in the back of the van. He has not had any fights. Uh, we've had two injuries. One, uh, one of our workers was standing on the anthill and got bit. He didn't know. He got bit several times. He called an emergency. They came, gave him some medicine, didn't take him in. And a second person stepped off the curb and badly twisted their ankle. So, no. And what did you do in that situation? Were you responsible for uh, taking them to the hospital or paying for their broken ankle? They didn't break the ankle, and, and they, neither one of them had to go to the hospital. But part of the funding that's appropriated from the city to St. Martin's helps pay for their workman's comp and insurance in case something is to happen. Okay. So that, they already have workman's comp because they're an organization, and they have insurance like any, anybody that has uh, employees. So this just helped expand their both of those okay. programs. One more quick question. Yes, sir. Of the, let's say there's $300,000 next year's budget. How much of that is administrative cost? How much is going to St. Martin's to, to do their deal and to pay for the will and the other bus driver? And how much actually goes to the homeless in a paycheck? So the $260,000 from the solid waste department is all geared towards the, the workers paying them uh, at least 20 workers a day, five days a week, 12 months a year, uh, the tools, uh, those kind of things. The, the 111 coming from our Family and Community Service Department where the city council appropriated the money to them and they dish it out to St. Martin's, then pays for the drivers. And depending, uh, Will's been there a longer time, so he probably gets about $15 an hour. Uh, the other drivers, less experienced, maybe $12, $13 an hour. So it pays for their salary, maybe one person doing bookkeeping, part of their salary, and then the rest of the money is for the meals, breakfast and lunch. And that's it. Very little overhead. Yes, right here. Here's a, and the microphone's coming, coming at you. Buenas tardes. Um, good afternoon, my name is Cynthia Harris. I work with Huffer International and I'm a Clinton School student. I, am, I work downtown and I live uh, downtown North Little Rock. Hello, Mayor. Um, it's the, uh, homeless people are very much a part of my daily life and this issue is dear and near to my heart. Um, one of the things that I'd like to hear more about is um, the main challenges that the city of Albuquerque is experiencing in scaling up this program. And also, as you see the replication happening in other cities, what are the challenges that they're seeing um, and how they are solving them? Thank you. So I'm going to say that because this is not my full-time job. I'm not a provider. I don't, I'm not in charge of the provider. I do special projects for both mayors. Um, so I don't have the time to find out from other cities how it's going unless they call me and want my advice, which is pretty cheap, zero, except Honolulu, if it might not be so cheap if you ask me. But um, uh, so I can't, I mean, I've been helping Tulsa here lately. I helped Tucson. I helped Lexington, Kentucky in the past. Uh, their challenges were uh, really getting the decision makers to appropriate the money. That was the biggest challenge. Uh, and then after that, uh, really, I was asked this question. I'm asked this question all the time. What were our challenges? Really, we were surprised that there were very little. I think the, the most complaints I got after we started this program was, you're not doing enough. I got emails. Well, the mayor did, because I read his emails every morning. 
is I would, he would get pictures of people under 311 signs panhandling and people saying, oh, this is really working, huh? Wasting our taxpayer dollars. So the challenges haven't been so much in terms of the program itself. It's been getting to that level for other cities to, uh, make the de to get the decision makers, the elected officials, comfortable enough to appropriate this money and not feel like they're going to be attacked by their taxpayers for doing this money. We haven't been attacked in that way. People want uh, to address this issue. Now, let me just say, do we have homeless? We have tons. Do we still have panhandlers? We still do. This is not going to get rid of your homeless situation or get rid of your panhandle. It's one program that we hope is a hook to start us on the way. And I'll give you a good example. Recently, uh, Mayor Keller assigned me a task to work with some downtown businesses and, um, and a small pocket of residents because uh, Hope Works is going to build and just got approved by the city council to build a 45 uh, unit housing area near their area, uh, near the, where these businesses are for people can have long-term living situation and they're up in arms. So the mayor assigned me the task to go essentially be yelled at. And uh, so I'm good at getting yelled at, but trying to work with them in terms of if you really want to be, a, uh, as you say, you want to be part of the solution, then let's sit down and talk. Yell at me and then let's start talking. And, and so I think it's really getting those people. And, and so I think what people who are against a program like this are saying, well, you're only going to serve 20 people a day working. What good is that doing? Why don't you serve all 4,000 homeless? Same thing with this housing. You're, what good does it do to serve 45 people when you have 4,000? Why don't you wait till you can house all 4,000? Well, you can't. We don't have enough money in our budgets to do that. It's a hook. It's a start. It's uh, caring about people. It's connecting them to services. It's giving them the dignity of work, to feel like they did something, to feel like they're important, to feel like somebody cares enough about them for that day to get them on the van and take them somewhere to do something instead of just standing around waiting for somebody to give them something. I'm passionate about this, if in case you haven't noticed. Back row up here. But, yeah. So my question kind of goes to that. Since this isn't a program to end homelessness, it kind of addresses panhandling and it connects people to services. What metrics does the city look for for the city board to say, okay, we're going to fund this another year or we're going to in increase funding? Is it we have less panhandlers on the street or we had so many people get jobs this year or we connected so many people to services? What metrics are being um, collected? All of the above. So, yes, we, they do have to, St. Martin's does have to provide a report for us. How many people did you uh, provide a job for? Uh, unduplicated. Uh, under the contract that we have with them, and I can send the contract to anybody who wants it, whatever information you want, contact me. I will get it to you. But part of the contract was that they had to get uh, a small, ridiculous number of unduplicated workers per year. They exceed that in their first month. So they, and the numbers that they get in. So they also have to report to us how many people did you get in services, behavioral health, uh, housing, uh, how many people got into other jobs. So that, those are the metrics. We, because the mayor of Barry wanted to start this so quick, we didn't even think about it, nor did we have time to go have a rough count of how many people were actually panhandling. And we all wish we would have done that to sort of see that metric. You know, there's in the winter, what is it? Uh, uh, point in time count, which I, is never the correct number because so many homeless hide. But I hope I answered your question. Question right here from city director. Thank you. Bienvenidos a Little Rock. I hope you have time to visit Jericho Way, our homeless resource center. And it's not really a question, just a comment. Uh, again, this wouldn't be happening without Vice Mayor Kathy Webb, and we've been waiting for your visit for a long time. I'm super excited. So many different providers and interested people <clears throat> excuse me, in the room right now, and interestingly enough, we're, it's budget time, and this fits so well under our city of compassion, and um, I, it, it seems so simple. I loved your uh, question, Chelsea. Uh, what, let's, let's do it. We all want to make it work. Bruce, let's just make it happen. That's all. <laughs> Thank you.
And no, actually, no, I was no I was, pressure, city manager. No <laughs> pressure at all. I was contacted by Cooper. Uh, Cooper, what's what's his last? Where is he? I didn't even know how to say his name in the first time. I mean, it was like I I mangled it. But he was going through Albuquerque, and he had contacted me, and I was busy with other things, and I finally was able to get back to him and called him on my cell. One evening, he was driving, and he pulled over, and we had an hour conversation and asked these questions and, and asked me, would I provide information to anybody you wanted? And I said, absolutely. So that's how that started. So it, it, again, it's um, really simple, folks. Now, when Mayor Barry started this, we were going through a budget crisis. And that was a question from some of his staff. Mayor, how's this going to look in a budget crisis? And you're asking for money to do this. And he heard all that. And that fist came down at the end and said, we've got to do something. And this is what we're doing. End of story. Question right back here. Hi, I'm Vicki Crockett with the City of Conway Homeless Task Force. Um, they, she mentioned moving into other work, and so did you as part of the metrics. Do you see any of that, um, any of the workers coming back to the city or to the driver for references or for using that work as work experience for a next job that they're looking for? I, I, I don't know offhand because I'm not intimately involved in the day-to-day -day work of that. Uh, so as I talk to Kelly Tillerson, who runs the, the work program on behalf of St. Martin's, they keep a file of if people want to self-report, so they keep their W-2s, they keep some information for them in their other work program as they transition, the one that they ran out of funds for, and I'm trying to help them get a $46,000 grant now um, to do their, their continue their work program. Some of those people, if they've gone to permanent work, yes, they do that. Now, St. Martin's Hope Works uh, has their own, uh, they started a coffee shop specifically to start training people uh, who were on the streets, a lot of them coming off the Better Way program, sort of worked okay. And then they had an opportunity through their board members, we, through our, the State of New Mexico Natural History Museum, which is in our tourist area, Old Town. And that cafe closed down. And the board members from St. Martin's, who were friends with board members w from the Natural History Museum, went to them and said, hey, we have an idea about opening this cafe and letting St. Martin's run it. And so now that's a work site. So people work there for six months as they transition from the better way, uh, worked other part-time jobs, got a little cleaned up. So they get in training in, on, on the cash register, how to wait on people, how to bake, how to cook, and then they transition from that to a regular job. So there's different ways to do it, okay? One of the things I didn't touch on is that I know, as I've been here for the last less than 24 hours, and as I've talked to people, is we have Little Rock and we have North Little Rock, and we've invited people from other communities how we do this. This program may not work for you all here the way we're doing it, but if you can figure out what works best for you, it can work. And so I had a visitor from a supervisor, county supervisor in the state of Washington, and he actually was the county supervisor here and he was hired by a mayor in a, one of the bigger cities in that county, and I forget how many municipalities were in that county, uh, 10, 12, 15. And as he, we were touring, and he was on the van, and he spent time with me, and part of my job is you ask me questions, you figure out what you want to do, is I brainstorm, and, and my suggestion to him is, why don't you see if you can get all the municipalities within that county, let the county run the program, let each of those municipalities, anywhere from 5,000 to 40,000 people, population in those, each of those municipalities, and they all pitch in a little bit of money, and you set up the program, so one day you go to this municipality, and the next day you go to the other one, and you do a rotating thing and see if that works for you. I haven't heard back from them if they've done it yet, but I figure, you want to figure out how to make it work? We don't have the patent on these people. We started it, we didn't even know if it worked this way. This is how we decided after brainstorming with the mayor that this is the best way for us, but other communities are doing it what works best for them. And that's what I would suggest to you. I will answer questions. I will talk to you on the phone. I will email you anything you want. I will help you get it started. I don't have to come back, unless you want to take me to Honolulu, but uh, <laughs> I will help you get it started, but you got to figure out what's best for you. Our final question here from City Director Wire. Thank you. 
BJ Wyrick, um, as Cappy said, we've been looking for you for months. We've been talking you up, and it's great to see this many people here. You were talking about from a, uh, a bigger perspective of different cities, counties being involved, and I'm wondering what would be the minimum resources that each one of these entities would have to have, and um, would that look like one resource center such as Jericho Way, which we all love and think it's a great place, or would you see a resource center in each one of those locations? Again, uh, I'll preface it with this. You have to look at what would work best in your community. My suggestion that I suggest to every individual, and I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of people across this country in the lower 48, Canada, Alaska, New Zealand, Mexico, whatever the case may be, is start a pilot project. Do a six-month pilot project, two days a week, $50,000 I think any program can start with $50,000. And then decide if how you do this program, if it works with that one entity, does it work in that one city? Do you want to change it if people, the decision makers, the elected officials who appropriate the money, when you go back to them, do you have a different plan to say, let's try different providers, let's try different ways of doing this? You all are smart. I am not that smart. And if I can figure it out, this collective body here can figure it out if you sit down and cut through the BS. Simple. Let's thank Alan very much. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. If anyone would like to contact me, write it down. A. Armijo. So it's two A's. A-A-R-M-I-J-O. The J is pronounced like an H. ARMIHO at CABQ dot GOV. And I'll be here afterwards to get information from you. And then once you do that, I'll send you my phone number and things like that. Send you any information, contracts, anything you want to know. If I can't answer it, I'll get you an answer. But ARMIHO at CABQ dot gov. And come visit with him uh, at the conclusion of the program. Thank you, thank you all for coming. And uh, thank you, Kathy Webb, for your leadership on this.